Hey y'all, it's Angela here again at the Chicken Coop, and I wanted to do a follow-up after I went through all my seeds and everything of my garden planting video. So I went through all my seeds, and I made a list of everything I have. One thing I did is I made a notation if I needed seeds for that particular item. In prepping, I'm kind of a little bit of a prepper. Uh, I have good preps for like all my food, my pantry, all that kind of stuff, but I don't have a real good prep for my seeds. And that is one thing that I wanna work on is getting a supply of my seeds. You know, last year we had a hard time getting seeds. So uh, that was one thing that I noticed that I don't have a real good uh, supply for the future of seeds. I've just have, you know, kind of limited. Some things I have a lot of, some things I have a very little of. And that is one thing I wanted to work on was getting more um, set up that I always have some seeds available. So I did make some notes of seeds that I needed to purchase. I looked up our last frost date and you know, a lot of people go by different things and you can look at different, uh, Google different dates. Um, my one site said uh, March the 15th, one said like March the 28th. So I kind of met in the middle and did like March the 21st. So what I did is I made this list and I kind of left a little a little border out here so that I could write on. This is when you need to sow the seeds indoors and this is when you need to you can plant them outside. Now it doesn't mean like just because if you miss this date you've missed completely planting them but that'd be the first date that you could plant them outside. So don't get too hung up on that. And then some seeds are just direct sown. You don't even have to worry about starting seed starts. I do a lot of things direct sown. Uh, I have not got any squash on here. I did not grow any squash last year because I was inundated with squash bugs. I still had squash bugs, a lot of them this year, uh, looking for squash, even though I didn't have any squash planted. So I'm not going to do any squash uh, for about two or three years and see if I can't get that that pest under control before I plant any more squash. Uh, squash are easy. I can get that easily at the farmer's market. Um, so I'm just not growing any squash. Uh, just not going to fight that pest. I try to stay, I want to say I'm totally organic, but I don't put any sprays or anything on my vegetable plants or my tubs or anything like that. The only thing I really uh, kill in my garden is fire ants. I have not found any way other than, you know, poisoning fire ants to get rid of fire ants. And if you are in East Texas, you know about fire ants. And that is one thing that's gotta go. Fire ants have gotta go. So, but I don't put it in my tubs. I put it around my tubs. So that's one thing you can kind of fight that without even contaminating um, your tubs. But would I say I'm totally organic? No, I'm not totally, totally organic. I wanted to show you this. This is, I got this from Clyde. But I did notice that Haas Tool has a very similar uh, little little gadget. So, and I'm not affiliated with Haas Tools, but it's a very good company, especially here in the South, uh, for a seed supplier, garden supplier, that type of thing. But they have a little little gadget about like this too. And I don't know if they bought out Clyde's or what, because it's very very similar to this. Um, but what you do is uh, you look at your spring garden and you come over here and you set your, your date. So I'm gonna put this red line on my average frost date and I've got in between March 15th and March 22nd. I don't know if you can see that. See right here. So I've got that little red line, that's your frost date, okay? And then it's gonna tell you on these things like, um, let's just take for cabbage. Look at here at cabbage. It says that you need to sow indoors your seed on January 11th. 
and then your first plant date would be February the 15th. And then your first harvest would be April. See, we're here on, let's see which side. Cabbage, there's cabbage. You can see that. And then you go across and it tells you your so indoors date and then your first planning out date, and then your frost, and then it would show you when your harvest would be. Okay? So, if you missed starting at that particular seed or whatever, it's not just too late to, you know, you're just gonna be a little bit later planting them or you might have a smaller uh, seed start to plant. Um, so, or you might have totally missed it and you just need to go buy, um, a, you know, plant starts for that instead of doing seeds for this year. So this is a handy, handy little gadget. And it also has a side for fall. And so what's on here is uh, it has onions, peas, spinach, cauliflower, radishes, turnips, beets, potatoes, broccoli, leaf lettuce, carrots, chard, green beans, sweet corn, cucumbers, squash, summer squash, melons, peppers, tomatoes, okra, and pumpkin. It'll tell you, uh, you know, that plants are recommended. Like, so you need to just start, you know, you don't direct sow those. The little asterisk tells you you need to put out plants. And here's a little legend. Asterisk is for plants. SI is for indoor seed starting dates. FP is your first outdoor planting dates. Then your the ch green check is your expected harvest. It's a cute little, it's just a neat little gadget if you don't have something. You can always just get a calendar and do the same thing, count back, but this is just kind of like a little slide rule type thing. Herbs have tons of herbs that I'm gonna grow. Uh, sage, lemon basil, I've grown dill before, tarragon I've never grown, cilantro I've grown. Cilantro though, we're in the south and it gets hot and it wants to bolt really bad in the south. Uh, Italian basil I've grown, parsley I've grown, lemon balm I've grown, bee balm I've grown, thyme I've grown, oregano I've grown, rosemary I have, um, chamomile and mint. Of course I've grown mint but I've never grown chamomile. Uh, potatoes, I've got to get my seed potatoes. Uh, beets, I don't have any beet. I thought I had some, but I don't have any beet seeds, so I'm going to have to get those. Um, beans and peas, I've got the Blue Lake Bush Beans. Purple Hole Peas, Christmas Lima Beans, Black Eyed Peas, and Pinto Beans. I've got to get those too, like I told you. Okra, I have plenty. Um, peppers, I have cayenne, red Marconi, tobacco, bell pepper, and banana peppers, which is what I'm going to grow. Tomatoes, I have mortgage lifter. I've never grown those before, so that'll be new this year. Rutgers, Cherokee Purple, Ponderosa, Roma, Large Red Cherry, and Italian Heirloom. Um, and then uh, greens, I have turnip greens, different kinds of Swiss chard, lettuce, and spinach. Grown all that before. Uh, cucumbers, I have Boston Pickling, Straight Eight, and National Pickling. I've never done the National Pickling. Uh, melons, of course, the cantaloupe, watermelon, honeydew. Usually those are the things that my husband grows in his little postage stamp garden that he has. Uh, so he likes to grow the melons. And one year, he had an exceptional crop of cantaloupe. I mean, they were just, I'm not a cantaloupe eater, but... He said they were wonderful, and he had a lot of them. He did a, a good job growing his cantaloupe. Uh, and then cabbage, golden acre cabbage. So uh, I've got a lot of work to do in my greenhouse, so that's going to be an upcoming video. Is doing is, uh, you seeing me starting my seeds and my seed setup. I've got to get on that. Um, I'm probably not going to do it this week, but maybe next week. Um, this week, tomorrow, my uh, friend and I are going, we've been doing kind of a pantry challenge this January for January. Um, we did, we went to my church because my church has a very nice, large, workable kitchen. It has two stoves, two sinks, that kind of thing, huge 
island that we can work on. We went to work on it together. She's not a very experienced canner, so I kind of went to help her and, um, you know, it's always fun, more fun to do that type of thing together. Oh, we did sweet potatoes and we did black eyed peas. And our black eyed peas are so good. They're, oh, they're good. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> and they were so simple, y'all. It is so simple to do black eyed peas and, and canning. So we did those. And then this next time, this week, we're, uh, tomorrow, we're going to go over to the church and we're doing... Um, uh, French onion soup and we're doing white potatoes now the French onion soup we've already both of us started our beef stock for our French onion soup nor last time I made my French onion soup I just used a bouillon cube but this time we decided to make our own beef stock and we have we are so fortunate we have a local um, meat uh, packing company here in town that we can also uh, go by. It sells commercially and um, just regular uh, to customers. And we went and got our uh, bones, beef bones for them, our oxtail and some other bones. And so we both started our beef stock yesterday. It's been cooking all night. Um, so it will be ready by tomorrow for our uh, French onion soup and just regular beef stock if you wanted to just can beef stock that is so simple y'all cook can your beef stock can your chicken stock it is so simple you could you can make a chicken stock use your rotisserie chickens like say you go to the store and you have a rotisserie chicken when you debone that chicken use that carcass you know or save them Put, them, put the carcass in the refrigerator. I mean, put the, it in the freezer till you get two or three of them and then make your chicken stock. Chicken stock is so simple to make. So we've made our beef stock. Uh, we've got that ready. So we'll can that tomorrow. We had potatoes on sale this last week at our store. So we both bought some white potatoes. So we're gonna can white potatoes and make French onion soup. That's something tomorrow we're gonna do. Um, we're both working on getting our pantries well stocked uh, and starting, you know, doing more canning for that. So sometimes they get that's something. Get a friend that you can do this with together. She and I are both into a lot of the same things, and we are just having a blast when we come up with stuff and we, you know, see recipes on YouTube. We're like, here's, look at this video. This is what we're going to do, you know. So we're having fun with that. Uh, I'll be back out in my greenhouse, like I say, starting seeds. I also have some house plants that I've taken cuttings on that I've got growing in the house that are more than ready to need to be planted in some pots, so I'll probably do that. Today, I'm also working on, I've got to make up some seed packets. We're, um, a local nursery in town is doing a seed exchange that uh, my garden club is participating in. So I need to get some seed packets together to do a seed exchange. And then we're also going, and that same day, there's also a seed exchange in the larger city next near us is Tyler. And uh, we're gonna go do participate in that seed exchange as well. So if I get any cool seeds, I'll show y'all what I share with y'all what I got. I don't have a lot. Um, I have some the hyacinth bean vine and I have a lot of zinnia seeds. I think that's what I'm going to package up and make for my seed exchange. Just lots of things going on here at the homestead. We're um, just getting everything Finally wrapped up from Christmas, packed up, put up, cleaned out closets to store more stuff, that kind of thing. Lots been going on. We're having some electrical work done this week. We're having some can lights installed in two rooms, some extra plugs installed in a couple of rooms, and some outdoor wiring done uh, for a generator so that we can plug a generator into the main house if we have to and some uh, outside electrical plug for our patio area. We never did do that when we built our little patio onto our house. So we're having some work done for that and just lots going on here at the homestead. So I hope y'all have a great week 
and get going on your gardening. At least get organized and figure out what you're going to plant. Even if you don't start your seeds, you still need to know. And that way, when you go to the uh, to the garden centers and things like that, and they have tons and tons of uh, plants, you're not so overwhelmed, or you buy things that you don't need, or you know exactly how much of something you need. Get organized for your garden. It will be a, so much less of a headache if you do that. If you just take one step at a time, focus on it and get it completed. You, when you're ready to start and plant your garden, you are ready to go. And I'm so glad that I went ahead and prepped my garden back in the fall for the springtime. So when it's ready, time to plant, I'm not gonna have to weed or anything. It's gonna be ready to go. I am so happy I did that this year. <laughs> I didn't do it last year and I paid the price for it. So thanks for visiting with me and I will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.